Congressman Kevin Kramer. Kevin, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule. Obviously, government shut down. What are you specifically and in the House trying to accomplish with this government shutdown? Well, what we're trying to accomplish is getting the government running again, and which is why we passed so many continuing resolutions, uh, all of them, of course, being rejected by the Senate, no matter how much you know how much to the middle we get they keep rejecting them so in, in an attempt to bring them to the negotiating table which is really what we're asking for is to get them to the negotiating table in an attempt to do that um, and to get critical services up and running again we're passing a series of appropriations or continuing resolutions for specific high priorities we tried it last night with three of them including veterans affairs um, and uh, keeping the city of dc operating and of course our national parks and monuments we put it on the suspension calendar, Chris, which means, of course, it requires a two-thirds vote to pass, and it has limited debate. But we weren't able to get enough Democrats to support it, so we're putting all three of those on the calendar today, and along with a couple of others, including funding the uh, National Guard and making sure National Guard men and women are paid. So let me ask you this question. Who do you blame at this point for the shutdown? Well, I think it's, you know, the shutdown in terms of blame... Chris, I'm not interested in getting into a real big blame game. The biggest problem, though, is, is that the other side won't negotiate with our side. If they would negotiate, we could all take credit for getting the government running again. So I'm focused on getting the government running, not assessing blame. That said... That Let me interrupt you for a second, sir, because right now the reason it's shut down is because we couldn't come up, obviously, with a clean CR, continued resolution for a budget... And now, finally, the Democrats in the Senate want to bring a budget res resolution to the floor, but the Republicans have rejected it 18 times. So isn't it the Republicans' fault for not getting this thing done? The re Republicans haven't rejected a, a resolution 18 times. We've sent, in the last several days, several funding bills, several CRs, over to the Senate. They want, they want to have it their way, or we are supposed to take the highway. They want everything they want, nothing that we want. The reality is, is that this is a... This is a big time in our country when we have are approaching a $17 trillion debt. We have runaway spending, and this is the moment where divided government has to come together and try to solve these problems. So we're passing continuing resolutions. They're rejecting them. So tonight we're going to pass, between uh, today and tonight, and tomorrow we're going to pass five continuing resolutions to fund our priorities and give them the opportunity once again to keep the government running. And in the process, hopefully come to the negotiating table so we can deal, Chris, not just with how we're going to fund government for the next two weeks or 45 days or 75 days, but how are we going to fund the government for the next 10 years? That's what's at stake. How are we going to fund this government for 10 years and get to balance? So will that include raising the debt ceiling? And if not, will you vote to raise the debt ceiling? It, it may very well include raising the debt ceiling. I think that's now is the time to have that discussion, quite frankly. As we know, you're, we're going to hit it in about two weeks. So while we're talking about continuing you know, the government for the next couple of weeks, we need to talk about continuing it for the next 10 years. How do we balance it? How do we get our economy going again? Frankly, I think balancing the budget would go a long ways to getting the economy going again. How do we deal with the long-term uh, issues like Social Security and Medicare, and how do we make sure they're solvent for future generations as well as the current generation? We can deal with those big issues, Chris. Our economy will get going again. Investment and investors will have reason to be optimistic and, and be bullish again on the United States, and, and we can get to balance and we can get to... Uh, to uh, uh, funding this government and its priorities uh, tomorrow if we can get after it. So just to be clear, you would vote yes to raise the debt ceiling, yes? Oh, I, we, haven't looked at, we haven't seen the debt ceiling uh, vote yet. We're, if, when we get to discussing the debt ceiling, Chris, there are going to be a lot of negotiations going on because the raising of the debt ceiling, the, the, the allowing the government to borrow more money is our problem. And our, the problem with borrowing more money is because we're spending more money. So all of these things have to be talked about in the context of not in the next 60 days or 90 days or even, frankly, 12 months. We need to talk about it in the context of the next 10 years. So if we're going to raise the debt ceiling, we better have growth and we better have cuts that are equal to or greater than the amount we're, at, we're allowing the government to borrow. So, Kevin, help me understand this, because, look, the, the point of our show here is really to get to the truth. You know as well as anybody being inside the Beltway, there's so much rhetoric, it's hard to get sure, to the sure. actual facts. Sure. Everything I read says, hey, if we raise the debt ceiling, it does not increase the spending. It only allows us to pay our current bills. And I heard you just say, hey, I'm not going to do that because I want to increase the spending. So what's the truth here? And if we're just going to pay the current bills, isn't that what we need to be doing? 
first of all, right, you're, you're correct in this. Raising the debt ceiling does allow us to pay current bills. But the raising of the debt ceiling is, in fact, a bargaining tool for those of us who want to balance our budgets. We have a president and a Senate who don't want to balance the budget. They want a trillion dollars in tax increases and a budget that never balances. I want a budget that balances within 10 years, if not sooner. So we've got two sides. We've got divided government. And we have to use all of the negotiating power, including the tools in our chest, in our, in our tool chest, to negotiate a settlement that gets to a balanced budget, that gets our spending under control, and yes, raises our debt ceiling and provides opportunity for the government to continue running with its priorities. Kevin, I want to get to two more things. I'm sure you're well aware. People are so sick and tired of the gridlock. A lot of people say, hey, you guys are not doing your job. You're getting paid, even though the government shut down. This just came out recently, and I want to get your comments on this because there's such a lack of trust right now for D.C. I think this is only going to add to it. When I saw this, I was on fire about how upset I was to see this going on inside the Beltway. Unfortunately, it's kind of what I should expect, but I'm still going to share it with you. A series of leaked emails authored by House Speaker John Boehner's Chief of Staff, Mike Sumners, shows that the Speaker may have coordinated with Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to exempt Congress from Obamacare. Here you guys are trying to get a bunch of perks, weasel out the taxpayers, the people paying you, and this is with our leadership. Is John Boehner the right guy to be leading these discussions right now, yes or no? He is the right guy and he's doing a magnificent job doing it and representing the conference and he's stood very firm in this debate. What went on previously between the leadership and the, and the President and the White House, I don't know. I, I've seen similar reports to what you're re referencing, but I will say this. John Boehner put on the floor of the House of Representatives a bill that ensures that we are not in fact exempt from Obamacare but that we are in fact subject to Obamacare. Republicans who, by the way, and, and I think this is a very important point, the party, the Democrat party that unilaterally imposed this law on the American people voted to exempt themselves from it and they did it as recently as the other night. Republicans who have unilaterally stood against this law voluntarily imposed it on themselves as a matter of integrity. One is hypocrisy, one is integrity. So I, I voted to, frankly, to ensure that I and my staff, the, the occupants and the employees well, of the White House and the President. Kevin, I've got about yeah. a minute left. I've got two things. Sure, sure. Let's assume that this information is accurate, that he was coordinating with Harry Reid to exempt Congress from Obamacare, would you still say he's the right guy, yes or no? He's the right guy right now. He is the guy that's in the chair, and he's done a magnificent job of carrying us through this debate and this discussion. He's been firm. He's done everything that, that you can do with 233 individuals with different opinions. Uh, he, he's done a good job of leading us. Last question for you, Kevin. As you know, Senator Hovind, Senator Heitkamp are going to donate their paychecks, assuming this government shutdown stays for two weeks, to charity. We still haven't heard from you. If this thing lasts for two weeks or more, are you going to take your paycheck? Are you going to donate or give it back to the, the U.S. Treasury? Well, a couple of things I'd say about that, Chris. Chris, I'm staying here and I'm working. My office is open. We're taking phone calls. I'm voting every day. I'm debating every day. I'm going to countless meetings. I'm working to earn the salary that the people pay me to, uh, to do the job. I, I don't get into those sort of stunty things, and I'm not going to do it. But I'll say another thing, and with all due respect, listen carefully to me, Chris. This is an important point. If you want a Congress that's full of millionaires and doctors' spouses, this is a great little trick. But our office is open, and I'm working, and, I, and I'm not going to get into the gimmicks. We have big issues we have to deal with. I understand that, sir, but as a commission salesperson in my life, I can make a million phone calls but if I'm not selling anything, I don't get paid. I think people yeah, will make the same analogy and, with you guys saying, hey, you can be taking a lot of phone calls, but you're sure. not getting your job done for the American people. Except here's where I'm different than the senator. We pass continuing resolutions. We pass appropriations bills. In fact, we passed a defense authorization and a defense appropriations bill that the Senate hasn't taken up. We passed 146 bills to their paltry you know, 67 or so. We're doing a lot more work over on our side than they are. Maybe, maybe they ought to go out and earn that. By the way, this last weekend, I was here working. I was here working until 12.30 midnight on Sunday morning. I was here on Sunday working. The president was golfing. The Senate took the weekend off. So I don't feel guilty about the salary that I earn and that the people pay me. And if it becomes a problem, you know, that's what elections are about. But we have bigger issues here today to deal with.
So just for clarity for people, yes, you will continue to collect your paycheck, correct? I will continue to earn it, and I will continue to collect what I earn, yes. Kevin, we always... And by the way, I'd love to be a... If, if I chose an area of sales, I could be very wealthy, but I've chosen an area of public service, so I'm not. <laughs> Well, you know what, you may have a very good point there, but I think it is a fair analogy because I've been in commission sales and I've seen a lot of guys make a lot of phone calls and still not make any money. So I just want to put that out there to you. As always, I thank you for being so frank and taking the time to be on the show. I know we're going to have you back on soon with the debt ceiling stuff coming up and also the farm bill. Now, that seems nowhere to be found, but as always, Kevin Kramer from D.C., thank you very much. We'll be